When troubleshooting a piston-driven system, what will you use to calculate your charge? Will it be superheat or subcooling? The answer is superheat. The reason why you want to use superheat to calculate your charge is you want to know the state of refrigerant in the evaporator coil. How do we get your superheat number? Well, what you want to do is take your suction line temperature, which can be done outside, and then take your low side pressure and convert that to saturation temperature. So again, you'll take your suction line temperature minus your saturation temperature on your low side. This will give you a superheat number. Now, what you want to remember is that you will have your actual superheat number, which will be calculated that way, and then you also want to have a target superheat. How you get your target superheat is by using what is called a slide calculator, or you can use Emerson's Check and Charge app, which will give you a target superheat number. You need to know what your indoor wet bulb is, and the only way to accurately get an indoor wet bulb is to use a psychrometer because you have to know what your indoor load condition is along with your outdoor ambient temperature in order to accurately get a target superheat. Then you can see what your actual superheat number is and, and adjust either your charge level or another big thing is airflow where you may either have too low or too much airflow uh, going across your evaporator coil. Thanks guys for watching. You can find more tips at edgetechhvac.com.